welcome everybody. Glad you were able to join me. Now, I'm here from Native Instruments. My name is Justin Myrax. Um, I'm a producer, composer, and sound designer. I've been working with Native Instruments for the past three years, helping them to develop sound libraries as well as to develop a new instrument called Machine. Um, Machine is a integrated hardware and software instrument. It's a performance tool. It's designed for you to be able to make music on the fly with a hardware-based workflow. It controls an application called Machine. So the point of Machine is to really give you a very engaging experience when you work on music. Because there's a lot of software out there that allows you to make music. But the problem with the software today is that you're in front of the computer all the time. You're using a mouse, you're using you know, a QWERTY keyboard, and it can be a little bit disconnected. So the machine integrated system concept really kind of takes that whole software-based idea and really gives you something that feels engaging like an instrument. So every aspect of the machine software can be controlled from this hardware. So today, we're actually going to start off by making a track on the iMachine, and then we're going to port it over to the machine to finalize some aspects of it. And we're going to start recording now. So I'm going to record a kick pattern in here. So let's hit the record button. So basically, when you record into iMachine, it's going to create a loop based on how long you play. I played for four bars, so it automatically created a loop based on how long I played. Once I disengage record, it's set. So the great thing about iMachine as well as Machine is they both have what's called a no repeat function. So the no repeat allows you to set like a musical time or a grid in which when you enter a note or press a pad on the display, it's going to repeat the note at that grid value. So I'll give you an example. I'll add a hi-hat sound. So now, this would be pretty hard to program on this phone, especially with my hands. I would hit multiple pads. It would be all bad. <laughs> but, you know, the fact that I could just press it now and just get into a groove, it makes it real simple. So I'm going to add that pattern into this sequence. We're going to go ahead and stop this now, and I'm just going to show you for the sake of time where the beat actually went, because I, I did a little bit more production on it. So here's how my whole beat sounds. All right. So usually when I get to that point, I just export my project and the samples that are contained in this project so that it shows up in my iTunes. When I connect my iPhone to the computer, it allows me to synchronize all the data, so then it's compatible with machine. I can just load up the project and all the samples directly into machine. So, so. And now, I can control the sound of the bass directly from the, the controller still. So, I, I like the way it's hit now, but I want to add some prettiness to the bass line. So let's add something to it. We're going to change the crush here. And we're going to change the cutoff setting. Okay, so I like the way that's sitting a little bit better. It kind of made it a little bit more pretty. And what I also like to do on the machine is add effect sounds. It has a great number of musical sound effects. Um, you can load your own presets in it, or you can use the presets that come with the machine. So I'm going to load one of the presets that I have on the grid just to really mess with the sound a bit more. So we're going to go here and load it up. So I'm going to use a filter sound here. So I think a filter would work well with this bass sound. So let's see what happens. I already like the way that sits. That, that sounds cool. It sounds like a different pattern altogether. 
So I want to really add that to the mix. So the way I would do that is by using machine automation stuff. So I'm going to just add this bell sound that I have loaded up. depending on the DAW. Some DAWs will allow you to open a machine that's like a 16 output mode. Okay. So then you'll get 16 different channels that you can route to the auxiliaries and say like Logic or Pro Tools. And then sometimes um, a DAW doesn't really specify that it has multiple outs. So then in, in those cases, usually it automatically defaults to using the 16 output version. Okay. So you definitely can route it. If you don't want to create stems from the machine, and you can just run into it. I mean, any more questions? Good, go ahead. Yeah, um, so like, my my ba my like battery library and like all my other libraries is pretty easy to integrate into the machine. Well, since the uh, machine is a, a host, you can load up battery inside of here. It doesn't import the, um, the kits, but it will load up the whole entire battery so that you can just use battery as a plug-in as you would in Pro Tools or any other host. Okay. So it's, it's a separate thing then? Like it's, it's not separate, it's, it's totally integrated. So you just, you can browse to um, instrument in here and then find battery and it'll load up just oh, like okay. a plug-in, just like you would in Logic or Pro Tools. Oh, okay. All VST and AU? VST and AU, it just doesn't do our task because that's, you know, that's Pro Tools, but you can, you can load up any formats you need to really get busy in here. And it, it, the great thing about it is that when you load up a VST in here, it actually maps all the parameters. So if the VST is already sending out um, different mappings, it will show up on on the screen here, and then you can control it from the hardware. Nice. Uh, I just have a question regarding uh, machine and logic. Yeah. Because um, I have machine micro, and I use logic a lot too. And what I like doing is using machine as a plugin. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you load machine as a plugin, you just uh, record and enable your track, and then whatever you made in machine as far as the beat, you lay it out in logic? That's a very interesting topic. And I've, I've, done, it. <laughs> I've done some videos on this. But, oh, OK. Um, it, it's, you, can, you have a few different options. It depends how you want to work, though. If, okay. if you want to actually be able to manipulate the MIDI information in logic, okay. then you're going to have to use sound uh, MIDI batch setup. I don't okay. know if you've ever gotten to that. Uh, yeah. OK, so you set that up. And you give each group its own individual channel. Oh, okay. And then in Logic, you can just map, you know, um, you, you make a multi temporal version. Okay. And then each multi temporal part will have a channel that is mapped to that allows you to control it. So then you can drag and drop MIDI directly from the machine into the sequence. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 